Hi, good evening. I am an AI product manager here in Tabula, uh, working with uh, the policy team, the content review team. And I just want to get to know you. Who here is a data scientist? Please raise your hand. Who here is a developer? All right, uh, product managers. And none of the above. What do you do here? Anyway, uh, tonight you don't have any titles. Tonight you are content moderators. So I want to welcome you into Tabula. You are uh, going to do some content moderation for us for free. And just before we get started, um, I want to uh, start your training in just one second. But before that, a few words about Tabula. So Tabula is one of the largest content recommendations platform in the world. What it means is that we have two types of customers. The first one is publishers like a uh, news site, you know, where uh, Ynet, CNN, NBC, MSN.com, that have like news articles. And the other type of, ad of customers that we have is the advertisers. And the goal of the advertiser is to sell their product or service, but pu by putting on the advertisement in the news place. So these are the customers that we focus on. And next, we have two goals at the, as the content moderation team. The first goal is to block non-compliant content. So if you are a big and famous publisher like CNN.com, you might not want some of those images, right? So our goal is to entirely reject them. They should not be in our network. Goal number two is to label correctly the ads. So what it means is that we can see a specific item and this item can be from different categories, different quality levels, and also different types of advertisement, like call to action, or just to like branding, different types. The goal here is to correctly label them because we want to allow the publishers to block certain categories. Like for example, let's say you are Disney.com uh, publisher. You might not want alcohol advertisement in your website, right? Because you, know, you have kids. So this way the category is important. And next on, we're gonna start your training. Okay, you ready? So I have some challenges ready for you. First of all, I'm gonna tell you what is the policy rule, and then you should do your best to follow it. So the first policy rule is this. The category of the ad must reflect its actual essence. Okay, you need to decide what is the category. This is the ad. And you have two options. First, real estate. Second one, gossip. Who says real estate? Raise your hand. Who says gossip? Oh, uh, okay, you got it right. Uh, yeah, it's actually gossip because the true essence, like if you're gonna click this advertisement, you probably won't gonna buy a Balibu beach house for $11 million. And if you do, I wanna work for you. You're probably just interested in the celebrity, right? So the category here is gossip. But what we've seen here is that human review is not really consistent. And this is one of the challenges that we have, inconsistency. The first challenge with human review. Okay, challenge number two, policy rule. Celebrities cannot advertise products unless they are getting paid for it. Okay, second example. Would you approve or reject? Who would approve it? Who would reject it? I think you got some tips. Okay, so anyway, he is a celebrity. I think the policy rule might have tipped you off. His name is Azim Premji, and he is one of the most famous Indian businessmen in India. So the thing is that he's probably don't get paid for doing this advertisement. And the thing here is that our human reviewers, which are basically Israeli based or in the Philippines, Morocco and Bulgaria, they might not know him, right? Like local celebrities are pretty unfamiliar and it's very hard to identify it. We're gonna... It usually is fraud, by the way. When someone uses celebrity without their permission, it usually is fraud, cloaking. We have many challenges there. Sorry? Okay, that, that's another story. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm going to mention the image recognition in just three more slides. One last challenge. So the content policy rule is Tabula does not allow any disturbing imagery. You ready? Okay. Uh, by the way, this is German. You are not that tired. Okay. Uh, so who here would approve it? Raise your hand. This is a kneecap, by the way. It's a kneecap. Who would reject it? Now, what if I tell you that this specific advertisement is making $85,000 per month for Tabula? Now, if you work for Tabula, who here would approve it? Raise your hand. So it's not a clear cut because sometimes there are some business considerations to be made before we take a decision and we must consult the business. So this is another challenge we have with, with human review that the policy is sometimes a bit vague. Sometimes we need to get some guidance. All right, so these are the challenges and decisions are tough, right? It's very hard for us. It's especially tough because we have so many decisions. We have around 150 decisions each day. I appreciate. What can we do? So we do three things. The first thing is that we have to remember that if we make a mistake, I'm gonna get a call at 2 a.m. from our CEO, Adam Singolda. It's enough that only one image will get approved by the mistake. And yeah, it wasn't easy time for me. Not my best hour, 2 a.m. But anyway, we have some precautions. So the first precaution, first line of defense is automation predefined rules that are basically good for like straightforward, you know, obvious decisions that you don't have to think. One example for it, let's say we got this image. This is like a uh, Photoshopped animal. I think a combination of a few different animals. Let's call him Philip, okay. So let's say Philip came along yesterday and it got rejected by a human, okay, human reviewer. The same image gonna come back again today. And then we can use automation to compare the two images. It's very simple. And to reject it as well, right? Very clear cut. The second way we enforce the policy is by AI, right? It's an AI meetup. And we use AI like machine learning models that are very good for standard decisions. Okay, they are, can be a bit more sophisticated. Let's give a few examples. The first example is the image safety. What the image safety does, we can show it two different images. One is compliant, the other one is non-compliant. This model can highlight the problematic areas and the output is, is it safe or unsafe? So each new image that comes along, we check it with this image safety and give an indication to the human reviewer, like a red flag. Another example for an AI model that we have, we have the face recognition that we can use for celebrities later on. These are some of my uh, teammates from Los Angeles. And we trained the model on a single picture. And once we provided the model with an image, it very easily identified each of them. So the blue ones are the one that it got identified. The red one, it is unidentified. Un 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 Just an example for CUAI models. And the last content review method is human review. We call it CRT, the content review team. And basically they do the hard work, the hardest decisions, the vague one, uh, if the category is very risky, they are the one gonna decide what should it be. So this is just like a glimpse to their platform. We call it Comet. So basically what a human reviewer does, it goes over on all of the queue, item by item, opens the URL, decide what is the category, what is the content safety, and uh, no pictures, please. I'm kidding, okay, I can take a picture. So these are the three different methods that we have. All right, who do you think makes the most decisions? Automations, raise your hand. AI. All right, half and half. Uh, content review team, the human review. All right, and the correct answer is automations. So 65% of all new advertisements go to automations. Only 4% goes to AI currently. 
and 31% goes to manual review. That's the situation right now. And if we compare AI and automations together, we can see that AI or automations is 15 times more impactful than AI. It's a bit uh, anticlimactic in an AI meetup. I know maybe it's not the smartest decision to show it here, but we think that we can all get along. And especially automations, it's not that powerful because it had some downfalls. So one of the downfalls is if we got this, remember Philip, it got rejected yesterday. And today Philip brought some friends. Now, as you can see, they, are, they look pretty similar, but that this is not the exact image. Automation will not catch it. And many of our customers that try to put like uh, images that attract your eyes and want you to click on it, they try to, uh, you know, I don't want to take game the system, but they try to trick us. So this is the image that they put, but we can't recognize it. It's too bad, right? We got those pictures, we can't reject them. So we send them to manual review. And we review the same images manually over and over and over again. It's, it's really uh, insane how much time the same images comes back and again in a slightly different uh, uh, model. Anyway, AI is very good for this, this kind of decisions. And this is when we embrace the concept of AI powered automations. AI and automation working, working together. And what we did is to come up with a new AI model. The AI model is called image similarity model. I think Elena also mentioned it. So this is the model to that we came with. And basically this model has two purposes. One is to say similar on a couple of images. Are they similar or are they not? These are the outputs. All right. Next on, let's, see, let's look under the hood. How does it work, this image similarity model? Let's take the two images. And we need to find a way to compare them. Right now it's like pixel to pixel, but it's a bit hard to do. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use embedding to turn it into a number that we can represent on a graph. We do it the same for the, both of the images. And now each image has a numeric representation of the image itself. And what we can do next is to simply calculate the Euclidean distance between the two images. Let's call it X. Now, if the distance between those two images is smaller than the threshold, the model will say similar, they're close enough. But if they are not close enough, they are X is higher than the threshold, then the model will say not similar in a very high level, how it works. Okay, no problem. We have this model, we set a random threshold and we went on our way. Let's test it on a few, uh, few images. First pair of images. So the one on the left, Obama. On the right, it's not Obama. <laughs> it's, uh, it's basically a random citizen of Indonesia. <laughs> There's no uh, blood relation that I know of, or is it? That's for another meetup. Anyway, it is not the same person. So let's say someone used Barack Obama's picture and it got rejected because he's a celebrity, right? You can't use a celebrity. And then a very similar image came along. The model said similar and we will automatically reject it. This is not the right decision. So even though the images are similar, it's not the same person. So the decision should be different. Example number one. The last example, another pair of images. The image on the left is non-compliant because of, I think you can see, and the one on the right, it is compliant. So let's say a human reject the first image, a similar image comes along. It is the same image, it is the same person, but the one on the right is compliant, the one on the left is non-compliant. Similarity is hard. We need to find a way to define what, what is similar. What does it mean to be similar? Which basically means which threshold should we use? This is our challenge. So we have AI, we have automation. This is the time to bring the humans into the picture. We have to ask content reviewers, trained content reviewers to help us to determine what is similar and what is not. 
All right. Next on. We gave each reviewer two images, okay? Philip A and Philip B. We chose three different reviewers and used the majority rule, majority vote to decide what is the ground truth. Is it really similar or is it not? Reviewer number one said those are similar. Review number two, those are also similar, but review didn't three, voila, didn't agree. So the ground truth for us is similar because we use majority vote. But what does the AI model say? The AI model say it's 0 0.55. Okay, what do we do with this number? We have to pick a threshold, right? If this number is gonna be smaller than the threshold, the AI model will say similar, right? So the first threshold we chose, the random one was 0 0.8. Because uh, if we compare those two, 0 0.55 is smaller than 0 0.8, and we will, the model will say similar, right? Because the actual distance is smaller than the threshold. So we say similar. Okay, cool, let's choose another pair, the other pair of the two barracks. Review number one said it's similar, also, the other two said it's not similar. The ground truth is not similar, right? Very simple. The AI prediction for those pictures is now 0 0.75. So this is the AI prediction. And if we compare it to the threshold, it is still smaller than 0 0.8, right? So again, it is still similar. But now the model is not correct because it is different than the ground truth, right? So this is a mistake opposed to the first one, which was a good call. If we want to assess this AI model, we need to compare it uh, with AI related metrics. And I'm sure most of you are familiar with them, right? Precision, recall, and accuracy. So the precision of this first threshold, because we, the model said similar, and each time the model says similar, it got it right only in 50% of the times. The precision is 50%. The recall is 100% because it caught all of the similar images. And the accuracy, because half of the, of half of the decisions are correct, is also 50%. Okay, this model doesn't look so good to me. Let's try another threshold. The second one is 0 0.4, sorry. Sorry? Yeah, so there was, yeah, there was a suggestion to increase the amount of images, which is correct. So in this example, we compare only two pairs, but in reality, no, we did it on hundreds of images to select the right threshold. And for this second threshold, we can see 0 0.4, the threshold is smaller than the actual result. So the model we say not similar. The distance is too far from the threshold. And this is a right call or a bad call. What is the ground truth? Similar. So this is a mistake. It didn't get it right. For the Obamas, it said 75 is higher than the threshold. So it said that this is not similar, but this time it got it right. So again, we can complete the table. The precision is undefined because you can divide by zero. Like there is no similar answer here. The recall is 0% because it didn't catch any of the positives. It didn't catch any of the actually similar pairs. And the accuracy is 50% because half of the answers are correct. All right, okay, last threshold, I promise. Let's hope we're gonna get it right this time. The third one is 0 0.6. 0 0.55 is smaller than 0 0.6. So we say similar, is it the right answer? Yay. And the second one, 0 0.75 is higher than the threshold. So we say not similar. And also this one is equal to the ground truth. So this is also a correct answer. We're gonna put it in the table. The precision is 100% because each time he said similar, it got it right. The recall is 100% again, because it caught all of the similar pairs and also the accuracy, all of the, all of the decisions are correct. So this is a very uh, introduction for AI metrics. 
Okay, we have the threshold and we launched, we launched. So the impact of this model, let's see it right now. So what it did before the model, 65% of all advertisement were reviewed by the automations, 4% by AI and 31% by the manual review. Once we created this model, we had a new slice to, to the pie. We have AI powered automation and it covers 11% of all advertisement. And we can see that the manual review was reduced from 31% to 20%, allowing the content moderator to give better service to the customers, to reply on chat, reply on cell phone tickets, and basically uh, give a much better service. Just like the aftermath. And so when we created this model, we selected the most, the most consistent reviewers like senior reviewers more than a year with Ebola that have a very high percentage of consistency. And this is how we created it. And uh, before we part ways, few takeaways, and we're gonna have the, the Q&A in just one second. I will give you the mic and everyone will hear. Uh, so first takeaway is keep an open mind. If you are a data scientist, you might want to check automations because it is very powerful. Don't, it's not like everything has to be go through AI. Sometimes the combination is what really makes the difference. And if you are a developer, think about a, an AI solution. The second takeaway is to use best practice. What we do here in Tabula is most of our models are not developed in Tabula actually. It's, they are free. They are from the open web and you can use existing models and just do some manipulation to fit them into your own product. So it's free and you, you don't have to build your own model each time you, you are facing a problem. And the last takeaway, join Tabula. It's really fun here. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for the great talk. We have many, many questions and you, I think, yeah, it was you. Yeah, thank you. I will come to you very, very soon. Yeah, please. Standing or sitting? As you wish. Okay. You mentioned that uh, the CRT job went down by 11%. How do you continue training the model? Or you don't need to? So basically, let me pass it. Automatic quality. Automation. Yeah. So, <laughs> thank you. Uh, we we launched with the model only six weeks ago, and we already see the difference. So there's no need for retraining. But we keep uh, so for each automation or for each AI solution, a human is reviewing it. So some of the manual reviewers are basically monitoring the decisions of the automations and the AI, just in case you know we make a mistake. Because sometimes the combination of the image and the text may create the wrong impression, and it's very difficult for an AI to identify these kind of nuances. So monitoring. Mm -hmm. Good, more questions, so you please. So uh, the training is the same for all images or do you have subcategories to each one, the own rule and the own training? So as far as the training goes, we want to focus on the most inconsistent pairs. So if we see that it's hard for us to compare uh, images of uh, I don't know, uh, people in bathing suit or celebrities, this is the one that we're gonna be trained on. So each, each few weeks, we plan to uh, run a, a sample check, see where we got it wrong, and then to retrain the model again or the most inconsistent pairs. But you run the same, same test on, on the picture of toys or celebrities? Yes, it's the same one, same test. More questions, please. Uh, thanks for a great talk. Uh, I thought about when I watched Philip or the uh, very nice girl that you showed that you could maybe add another layer of comparison. So if they're like similar, like above 50%, you can try translation, rotation, reflection. I mean, just, you know, take the one picture and compare them scaling. These, these are actually the tricks that those that try to trick you are using. So if you, you, you do that, I mean, if you turn Philip it would, uh, you know, rotate Philip or do the reflection, you'll get like 90% similarity. And then you would choose the best score of all those. And then, okay, that, and, and this will be the true similarity, not the 0, 0.55 5 because it's rotated. Are you looking for a job? 
<laughs> we have some openings. Uh, uh, yeah, definitely. Thanks for thanks for the tip. All right. So more questions? Uh, yeah, please. I'll come to you very very quickly. Yes. Um, two questions, but the short. First of all, um, how many uh, samples did you use to train the similarity model? Because you said it was, uh, and uh, it was uh, humanly curated. And the second one is, once the um, AI assisted automation worked, could have it replaced the old automation or are they complementary? I like this work because I have time to think on the answer. So uh, for the training data set, we had 2,400 uh, pairs of images. By the way, a uh, story about it. The first time we asked viewers to moderate it, we told them, tell us if it's similar or not. But then we had this example of this woman with this uh, top part and without it. And they said, yes, those are similar. But we didn't want them to say it is similar. So we asked, are they similar? And would you get that, the same decision? So this is one thing about the, the training set. And this is a complementary to what the AI currently reviews. It's a complementary for the automation, actually, that misses it. Okay, so we have at least one Zoom question. And the question is, what are the best heuristic automation rules? Okay, now I'm in trouble. Uh, I'm just a product manager. I don't know. But uh, whoever asked it, uh, I'm sorry, uh, please uh, contact me after this talk and I will connect with the right person. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.